Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at solving systems of equations algebraically using the process of elimination, also called multiplication addition. The systems that we're going to look at are linear quadratic and quadratic quadratic. Now, the elimination method is sometimes called the multiplication addition method. And that's probably actually a better name for it because the central concept is that you're going to take your two equations and try to combine them together by adding so that you eliminate a variable. And sometimes you need to multiply one or both of those before you add them to eliminate a variable. So in our situation here, when we look at these two equations, we have one quadratic and one line. This one has an x squared in it. This one has an x in it. But if you look at the y terms, the y terms are such that we can multiply this one by a value that is going to make the y terms opposites. So in this situation, what that's going to look like is I am going to leave the first one alone as x squared minus 4y equals 6. But the second one, I am going to multiply it by negative 2. Because if I multiply it by negative 2, this is going to become plus 4y. And that is going to be the opposite of minus 4y, which means that when I add the two equations together, those y terms are going to disappear. So what I'm going to get here when I multiply this out by each of those terms is I'm going to get minus 2x. Now I'm going to write it there because it's not the same as that term. So I don't want to make it where it looks like those match up with each other. I have minus 2 times minus 2y, which gives me my plus 4y, which is the purpose of this. And then, of course, I have minus 2 times minus 9, which gives me 18 here. Now that I've done that, I can add those together and I get a new equation, x squared minus 2x. These add to 0 and that equals 24. If these two equations were true before about our values, then this new one is also going to be true. And we can use that to find the x value because we've eliminated the y value. This one has no y values in it. To proceed from there, I likely want to move that 24 to the other side. And I'm going to have minus 24 over there equals 0. And probably the simplest way to solve that one is to factor, because it's not too hard to factor that into two binomials, x and x. It is going to be minus 6 and plus 4. And then from that factored form, I can determine my two x values, x is either 6 or x is negative 4. And then from those, I can find the y values that go with them. To find the y values that go with them, I am going to use one of these two equations. I'm going to choose the one that's simpler to work with. I think this one is going to be simpler to work with. I am actually going to rearrange it a little bit. I am going to take it and move the 2y to that side. And I am going to move the negative 9 to the other side, which makes plus 9. And then this x is, of course, still there. I'm going to use that one to determine each of my values here. So when I have x equals 6, if I substitute the 6 in there, I have 6 plus 9 equals 2y. So 15 equals 2y. So y is 7.5. And then when I have x equals negative 4, if I substitute that in, I have negative 4 plus 9 equals 2y, or in other words, 5 equals 2y, which means I have y is 2.5. In the end here, my system has two solutions, and those solutions are 6, 7.5, and the other solution is negative 4, 2.5. All right, you could verify those by substitution into the original equations. You could graph the original equations by hand or with technology to confirm those. We aren't going to do that right now. We're going to move on to another example. 
this example, these two look a little more complicated. When you're looking at trying to think about how you're going to eliminate a variable, with quadratics, you're going to often have both x squared and x terms. And it's going to be difficult to try and multiply and add to eliminate the x terms. It's going to be always easier with quadratic functions here to eliminate the y value. These two terms don't match up with each other as is. So I need to multiply to make them match up. I can multiply this first one by 5. I can multiply the second one by 2. And that way, both of the y terms will be minus 10y and plus 10y. I'll write this first one out first. I am going to have 5x squared plus 15x minus 10y. On the other side there, that is going to give me negative 28.25. The second one, I'm going to have 4x squared. I am going to have plus 10y. And I'm going to have 22 on this side. So when I add those two, I'll get my new equation that does not have a y term in it at all. I'm going to have 9x squared plus 15x. These cancel out. They add to 0. And over here I have negative 6.25. To solve that, we're going to move that term to the other side. So we have 9x squared plus 15x plus 6.25 equals 0. Now to go about solving that, we can try factoring it, or we can use the quadratic formula. I'm not going to bother trying to factor that right now, but you could. If you use a quadratic formula, you're going to have x equals minus 15 plus or minus square root of 15 squared minus 4 times 9 times 6.25 all divided by 2 times 9. If you go about simplifying that, you have plus or minus square root of 225 minus 225 over 18. This actually is going to add up to 0 here. If you work out what that is, that is going to give us negative 15 plus minus square root of 0 over 18. What this means is I'm only going to have one solution here because when I have negative 15 plus or minus 0, that doesn't make two different solutions. My only solution is negative 15 over 18, or in other words, in lowest terms, negative 5 over 6. That is my 1x value. I'm not going to have two. This, this system is only going to have one solution. There's only going to be one intersection point, one common point between the two equations if you looked at a graph. So now what we need to do is find our y value. So to find our y value, we're going to take that 1x value. x equals negative 5 over 6. I'm going to work with it as a fraction. You could work with it as a decimal. Go to a calculator, divide what, figure out what that is. I am going to use the simpler equation here, which is this one, to find my y value. So we had... 2x squared plus 5y equals 11. So if I substitute that in for x, I have 2 times negative 5 sixths squared plus 5y equals 11. This actually gives me 25 over 36 times 2 plus 5, 5y equals 11. If I keep going with that, this actually gives me 50 over 36, or if I reduce it by doing that, I get 25 over 18. Easier to keep the number smaller if I can. If I want to now isolate, I'm actually going to go over here, and we're going to leave the 5y on the left side, but I'm going to move this over to the other side and make it 11 minus 25 over 18. What I need to do with the 11 is make it a fraction out of 18. It is actually 198 out of 18 minus 25 out of 18. That's what 5y is. What that's going to give me is 
198 minus 25 is 173 out of 18. But that's what 5y is. If I divide both sides by 5, I get that y is 173 out of 90, which means that my solution in the end here is negative 5, 6 was x, and 173 out of 90 was y. That's that one single solution there. If you wanted, you could, of course, uh, work it out on a calculator, see what it is in decimal form, if that's what you want. What that is in decimal form is negative 0 0.83 with the 3 repeating and 9.61 with the 1 repeating. Either way, if you wanted to use decimals, you could just go to a calculator instead of doing the fraction work that I did. That is up to you. All right? So that is using elimination to solve a system of equations. The key point being you are multiplying one or both equation so that when you add it up, you eliminate one of the variables and then you proceed from there to solve the leftover equation that has only one variable left in it. That's it.